Hey guys, so today I want to break down the banner for Beast Gohan. This banner just released today. It, you know, it's only a few hours old at the time of me recording this video, and I've already had a ton of people asking me if I think it's worth summoning on this banner, especially because we're so close to the end of the year, and we tend to get a lot of really crazy hype stuff towards the end of the year. Um, so it's a fair question, you know, um, even though obviously Beast Gohan is probably one of the more hype characters they could have possibly released. Honestly, probably the most hype character they could have released. Um, I'm a bit surprised they're doing it right now, but um, it's it's not an easy decision to make when um, we're so close in proximity to uh, what Legends Festival should be in terms of the release time. So let's quickly take a look at what this banner is. So this is obviously the normal format for a L Legends limited step up character, Beast Gohan. But the main difference between this step up banner and a lot of other step up banners, you know, that are not part of like major celebrations like anniversary and legends festivals that most of the time they don't include other spark, other new sparkings on the banner. Um, so that's the one big difference, right? Because this um, superhero beast Gohan step up banner has two other new sparkings besides Gohan. This used to be a common thing that they used to do back in the day, the early days of this game. They would release banners that had, you know, three, four new sparkings on them. But over the course of the past, I want to say year and a half or so, they've shied away from doing that. And a lot of times we just get banners with the new LF and that's the only new character on the banner, maybe besides like an EX or two. So them, uh, them releasing this banner with Gohan and Piccolo and Pan on the banner, who are all really, really good units, it definitely makes the decision a lot more difficult. So. Let's go ahead and take a look here. This is, again, a typical format. It is a 20% sparking pull rate, and you get double the Z power for pulling every single character on the banner. Whether it's a hero character, an extreme character, or sparking, you're getting double the Z power you normally would on, an, on any other type of banner. All right, so um, as we know, the format for this is a step up. Um, we can, I guess, sort of go through the steps here. So step one, um, actually, is there, is there like a better list than this? Here we go, step list. So step one, you only do one time. It's going to give you three characters, 300 crystals, whatever. Um, then you're getting step two. This is where you start from. So once you complete all the steps, you go back to step two, and then you start again. This is, what's the, this is what the rotation is. Step two is five characters for 500 crystals. Step three is seven characters for 700 crystals. Step four is a normal uh, multi-summon for 1,000 crystals, except it's a uh, step that guarantees extreme or higher, so no heroes allowed. Step five is a normal summon, but then step six is going to be a free summon. This is where most of the value comes out of these ultra, uh, ultra banners, <laughs> comes out of these LF banners, I think, because of the fact that you're getting the free multi. And don't forget, every time you do a multi on one of the steps that requires crystals, you are getting a summon coin, which you can use to go to the summon coin shop um, and exchange them for either, you know, if you actually manage to accumulate 50, you can get straight up Z power for Gohan. Um, or you can grab tickets, or you can grab Z power for any Legends Limited character, depending on how many uh, medals you have or how many coins you have. Um, so then the question is, what are the featured units here? The featured units are obviously Beast Gohan himself, and then there are six other Legends Limited characters in the banner here. We have Trunks, we have Cell, we have Revival Gohan, Future Gohan, uh, LF Goten, and LF Super Saiyan 2 Gohan. Now clearly their thought process was, let's just load up this banner with Hybrid Saiyans because it makes sense. You want to run this Gohan on a Hybrid Saiyan team, you're going to need Hybrid Saiyans, etc, etc. So I guess we can go through each Legends Limited character and sort of judge the banner that way as well. Beast Gohan. Um, it is still extremely early to, I guess, accurately rank or, I guess, put into words how good this guy is. But in my limited experience playing with him and against him, I think it's pretty obvious that he's just straight up number one in the game. He's just insanity. It does remind me of the androids when they came out. It, it does feel at that level. He's just head and shoulders above the rest of the game, and it doesn't really feel close even. So with that said, like <laughs> this guy being probably the hypest character in the game and the best character in the game, I would say that if you decide to summon on this banner, and this is sort of going to be my preemptive conclusion here, if you decide to summon on this banner, there's like you're not wrong <laughs> for doing that. And there's no way I can tell you guys in good faith to skip the banner that features Beast Gohan. Beast Gohan, this is literally like the, the only game that exists besides Heroes that actually has Beast Gohan in it. And you know, the movie superhero is now uh, has now released at this point worldwide 
and Beast Gohan, the new transformation, like the new hype thing. Like everybody wants Beast Gohan, like summon for him. Like I actually would encourage people to summon for the new hype character that people want. Uh, next we have Sword of Hope Trunks. This guy released last year during Legends Festival. Actually still pretty good. Obviously he's succumbed to power creep as is as has the rest of the game, you know, that, that, that has come out in the past, or I guess eight months plus ago from now, they've all sort of been power crept at this point. Same thing with the cell, definitely starting to feel the effects of power creep, but he has, you know, a spot in the meta right now, I still think on future and, and androids. Um, thanks to his unique equipment, he's been able to hang in there longer than most other characters have. Arevel Gohan, really, really good still. I think um, probably one of the best aging characters in the game, especially thanks to the fact that he's not only a revival character, but he's also supporting, he's also healing, he's doing a lot of intangible things that many other characters don't uh, are not able to do. So, nice character here. Future Gohan just got a resurgence thanks to his really, really strong, unique equipment. Um, so, nice option, obviously, for Future, for, for Sun Family, for Hybrid, so he's a good option as well. Goten and the Super Saiyan 2 Gohan down here. It's actually kind of insane to even say this, but this <laughs> like this red Gohan isn't even really a factor anymore. Um, and Goten, I don't really see a world where you would really use Goten either. So not counting the um, red Gohan and the purple Goten, the rest of the banner is pretty solid, right? Future Gohan, um, Revival Gohan, Cell, Sword of Hope Trunks, and then obviously Beast Gohan. That's a solid lineup of LF characters. Um, could it have been better? Of course, there's always a lot better characters they could have put on this banner, but I think in terms of like you wanting to build a team around the main headlining character here, there are some options that you have here, right? Except for like Cell. I don't really know if you could. <laughs> could you put Cell on this go and Beast go on together on a team? I guess if you utilize the leader slot, sure, but if, as far as traditional teams go, like these are powerful hybrids, right? The the blue sort of hook trunks, even though you're probably not going to be running this guy and Beast go on together just because of the both, they're both the same typing. But Revival Gohan, Future Gohan, both strong. Um, and then in terms of the 1% sparkings, the Piccolo and the Pan, I think this Pan, at this point, I've used both of them at this point, I think Pan potentially has an argument to be like a top five character in the game. That's how stupid Pan is. She is so annoying to fight. It's actually ridiculous. Reducing key, locking main abilities, like in increasing your sub count, like a lot of, in again, intangible things that we haven't seen before, including um, she has an ability where she reduces the art's power, so it decreases the amount of damage you're doing with strikes, blasts, blue cards, ultimates, and that is a new mechanic that Pan introduced into the game, and I think that's probably the way they're going to move forward with trying to curb the offensive power creep, but Piccolo is also pretty solid. The only thing with Piccolo that I would note, though, is he is a ranged character. And so his two teams that he has access to that are actually viable teams is are regen and movies. Movies is so stacked at this point, and it's also so strike heavy that it's probably going to be sort of tough to find a spot for Piccolo. I think if you're going to run Piccolo on movies, you're probably just running the full superhero team, which is Piccolo, Pan, and, and uh, Beast Gohan, right? That's obviously what they want you to do with this banner. Um, but any other setup for movies on, with Piccolo is probably not going to be as effective. And then on regen, regen just needs a better team in general. I think the one thing regen is missing that they really, really need desperately right now is just a tank character, which I'm really, really hoping that once we eventually do get orange Piccolo, orange Piccolo does just, you know, come out and he's just like this hulking monster tank for regen. That would really help round out the team a lot and complete that uh, that setup for the team. But he's he's pretty solid on regen. He's able to do a lot of damage. He can restore his vanishing gauge. Um, you know, he's doing a lot of intangibles as well, like healing, drawing green cards, uh, stuff like that. So he's he's pretty good as well. Um, obviously, Beast Gohan, I think, is better than both these characters. But I, if I had to rank the three, I'd go Beast Gohan, Pan, and then Piccolo. Um, and then in terms of the 0.5% pull rate sparkings, we have Gamma 1 and 2 who are solid. But I just... I... Again, they're on movies and androids. Um, androids, I guess you can find a spot for them, but on movies, there's just it's so like stacked with other better units. That's yeah, whatever. Green Broly, I don't like. Um, Yellow Cooler Movie Goku can be solid, um, but I feel like he's definitely aged at this point. This Red Pickle, I feel like kind of the same thing. Green Trunks, I feel the same thing. This guy's a Zenkai. This uh, Blue Pan just came out as a Zenkai character, um, and I, I feel like she's actually pretty good. Um, but, uh, again, blue hybrid, I, <laughs> yeah, Beast Gohan's your blue hybrid Saiyan now. Um, but th the good thing is Pan now can Zenkai buff, uh, the Beast Gohan. So if you pull Pan and you pull Beast Gohan, that's a, that's a good combo. You can have Pan on, uh, Pan on the bench and then Gohan, obviously, in the fight. Um, and that's really the lineup we're looking at for this banner. I would say the downside to this banner is the 0.5% sparking pool is pretty weak. 
Like green Broly is definitely not what you want. Um, I would say this red Piccolo is definitely not what you want. This green Trunks is definitely not what you want. This blue Gohan is definitely not what you want. But this Pan is okay. Uh, I think the cooler movie Goku is okay. And then the Gammas are, are solid, I would say. But other than that, you're kind of just hoping that you pull Pan, Piccolo, or the Gohan, which again, I think is still pretty good considering that most banners don't even have access to like decent secondary options other than the one new uh, LF character. Now, the other thing to bring up as well is the fact that we are so close to Legends Festival. Now, I am assuming, um, if we take a look at the news actually, so if we go over here and take a look at the banner information, um, this over here, it tells us that the first part of this banner goes until the second, which means that the, the double rates and all that stuff, like all the perks that you're getting, all the summon coins, I think, as well. Um, what does it say here? The first part, uh, blah, 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 get double the normal Z power plus sparking rarity 20%. Yeah, so the, the double Z power and sparking rarity of 20% are only applicable towards this first portion. So until the 2nd of November, you'll be able to get those perks. But after the 2nd of November, basically what happens is this banner turns into like an ordinary banner without those extra perks. So there really isn't a point in waiting until that part two for anything, right? So I, I think if you're going to be summoning on this banner and you decide to summon on this banner, you're going to want to summon on this banner during the part one part, right? Um, which means that you're not going to be able to like wait until Legends Festival starts, see what's coming out, and then make a decision. Unless you don't care about summoning on like the non-perked part of this banner, which is the part two starting from uh, the 2nd of November here. But going off of last year's schedule, and I'm actually going to switch over to Chrome here. So if we take a look at Legends Festival last year, now the major difference, um, well actually let's just start with the dates I guess. So the Legends Festival banners last year released on the 24th of November, which is typically when we see Legends Festival. So like the past two years, they've both released around the same time period. Um, but basically Thanksgiving uh, time in, uh, in the US. So we have the Trunks banner and then we have the Goku and Vegeta banner, again, both releasing on the 24th of November. And they go all the way until the end of Legends Festival, which basically was a two month period last year. So a pretty long period of time. But the one major difference between Legends Festival banners and like the current um, step up banner format we have for Beast Gohan is that th these banners are triple rates and they're triple Z power. Now, we don't know if this is returning for Legends Festival this year. It's very possible <laughs> that they did this last year and they realized it was a massive mistake. They could have done this last year and we're like, okay, we're never, we're never gonna do this again. So there's no guarantee that the triple rates and triple Z power will actually come back this year. But just keep in mind that they did this last year. So I would not be surprised at all if they decided to do this again this year. The next thing is the banners themselves. Uh, and it's really hard to say, you know, whether the, um, <laughs> Legends Festival banners this year are going to be um, the same or better in value than we got for these banners last year. But these were very good banners, right? The, like if you take a look at the actual featured LS on this banner, at the time when this banner came out, let me see if I can find, yeah, here we go. We had characters like Rose, who was pretty good. We had Vegeta, uh, Evolution Blue Vegeta, who was really good. Future Gohan was really good. Vegeta Blue was really, like you could straight up build a future team from just this banner. You could build an entire team from this banner, and it was it was actually pretty good. Like Goku Black and Zamasu was really good. Trunks himself obviously was really good. The Mai was solid. So you had a lot of good options on this banner to just take and build a team instantly. I think looking back at this, like the Goku and the Vegeta banner probably wasn't as good as the Trunks banner. We can scroll down here. There's definitely some good options here. Um, we have Broly, Majin Vegeta, Super Vegito, Blue Gogeta, Beerus. And then Full Power Frieza. I mean, there was, yeah, there's some good characters on here last year as well. Like Full Power Frieza was really good still. Uh, Vegito got his <laughs> Zenkai during Legends Festival, so he was, um, he was good. Uh, Blue Gogeta was still good. Broly was still solid. And then Maja Vegeta, I mean, now he has a Zenkai, but back then he was kind of like, okay. So, I mean, these banners were, were solid. Um, back, Broly was, was decent back then. It's just he aged really badly. Uh, 17, you know, all these characters were pretty good, but uh, go obviously Goku and Vegeta, I think at this point, is pretty, pretty well established and people accept the fact that I think back, even when these guys came out, Goku and Vegeta were better than Trunks, but they were both really good. So the bottom line is these banners were really good and they were triple rates and triple Z power. So it's tough, right? I mean, I, I could tell you right now, if they do do triple Z power and triple rates, 
like objectively speaking, it's probably better to save <laughs> and skip the Gohan banner until Legends Festival because triple Z power, triple rage is just too insane. It's just too good. Um, and then obviously the uh, second part of Legends Festival last year was them introducing the first summonable Ultra character, which was Ultra Gogeta. I typically never recommend for people to summon for Ultra characters just because the rate is too low and um, the banners themselves typically aren't nearly as good because there's no double Z power, there's no double rates. Like these banners just aren't good compared to the um, LF banners at all. Um, but let's go back to the uh, Gohan banner here. The thing with the Gohan banner is you also can build a team from this banner, right? I mean, look at the banner. Gohan, Piccolo, and Pan. That is a very, very, very solid movies team right there. And if you're somebody who likes superhero, if you're somebody who likes Gohan, you've been waiting for this character to release in a game finally, and then he's finally here, I would I would say go for it. I don't really see a downside to summoning on this banner. Sure, you know, when Legends Festival comes out, they could potentially give us these like absolutely never before seen crazy groundbreaking banners, but there's a chance they aren't groundbreaking and crazy, right? So this, this, I would say this is a, an ample opportunity to just take what's in front of you and go for this. I think it's worth it. I think it's worth summoning on this banner. Um, kind of reminds me of um, the Androids, the LF Android 17 and 18 banner that released before uh, the anniversary. It's like, yeah, UI Goku was hype and stuff and you know the banners were cool, but that Android 17 and 18 banner, like that was a better banner than pretty much everything else the anniversary had, so. I feel like we might be in a similar spot with this Beast Gohan banner. I would say go for it. I, I would recommend people to summon on this banner. It might sound crazy. People might not agree with this, but even with Legends Festival being close, I I would say that summoning on this banner is not a bad choice. So let me know down below if you guys are excited for this banner. If you guys have summoned already, let me know how your summons have gone. Good luck, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. See you all in the next one.